Welcome to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Our very special guest for this segment is Kathleen Rice. She is the Nassau County District Attorney, and she is also a candidate for Congress. Kathleen, welcome to Reaching Out. Thank you for having me, Greg. You have been a long advocate in efforts to, uh, I would say, to stop drunk drivers from getting on the road. How is that going? When I became DA now eight years ago, this was an epidemic, DWI, and it still is. Uh, we had an on average 3,000 DWI arrests every year. One of the first cases I tried was a murder case that uh, involved a drunk driver who killed two people. This is a serious problem. This is an issue that is claiming lives on our roads every day. But I am happy to say that eight years from that time since I became DA, there is far more awareness about it. Um, I talk about it wherever I go. It's not just about being strict in terms of the enforcement of DWI, but there's also an educational component. We go into all of the high schools and teach kids about the dangers of drinking and driving and making bad decisions. But unfortunately, the majority of drunk drivers are adults who should know better. So it's uh, a continual campaign that we are going to wage on and on until we get this problem under control. But we have made you know, some significant uh, progress in this area in terms of better legislation, um, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah, and in addition to uh, drunk driving, you are also involved in drugged driving and uh, distracted driving, which is texting mm. while uh, driving. Yeah, those are two enormous problems, and unfortunately, the law does not address them appropriately. We have a case on trial right now with a young man who was speeding in his car, and he was high on marijuana, and he killed the four occupants of his car. He, was, he walked away, but he killed his four friends in the car. These cases are very difficult to prove, and you have to remember that it's in the context of a time in our country when more people are on prescription drugs than ever before, for whatever reason. Um, but prescription drug abuse has become a, uh, not only, I think, this nation's number one public health issue, but certainly the number one public safety issue as well. We have taken steps here in New York by getting legislation like iStop passed that allows for the real-time reporting of any prescription that's written or filled for an opiate. Uh, but what that has, and that's gotten the prescription drug problems, it will get it slightly more under control. But you have people who still ha need that high. And what they're doing is they're going out and they're getting heroin, which is much cheaper. It's more accessible. It's easy to get. And it's really powerful and it's killing people. So... Uh, Drugged and distracting driving, distracted driving. We, you know, as far as the distracted driving, I have always maintained that that is a question of enforcement. There is a reason why there are such tough penalties when you get caught texting and driving or talking on your phone and driving, because studies have shown that texting and driving or talking on the phone and driving are, are tantamount to drinking and driving because it distracts you that to such a high degree that uh, it rises to that same level. Yeah. So these are huge problems. Now. Uh Marijuana. You say the young man was, uh, I'm assuming he's a young man. Yes. Was high on marijuana? Yes. Uh, marijuana is not legal in uh, New York State. How, how, how can you not prosecute him for that? Well, we are prosecuting him, but in terms of your run-of-the-mill DWI, okay. whenever someone is drinking and driving, there are tests that you can give them to determine how much alcohol is in their system. It's very difficult to do that when someone is on drugs, whether it's cocaine or heroin or even a prescription drug. And so we're trying to get better laws on the books to allow us to more aggressively prosecute drugged driving because that we are seeing in increased numbers, but it's very difficult to prosecute. In this case, we, have, we took the defendant's blood and we were able to tell how much T, uh, THC level, the, what his level was, his marijuana level was in his blood. But in your run-of-the-mill drugged driving case, we don't have the ability to take the blood from defendants. And okay. so we have to go on visual cues that police officers are trained to look for. See the difference. Uh, you are now a candidate for the United States Congress. You are running for the seat that's going to be vacated by Carolyn McCarthy. And uh, she came into office. She was a nurse, and she, uh, unfortunately her um, son was shot and her husband was killed in the Long Island Railroad, and she came to, I would say, um, office tragically, but she's done great work 
with um, gun violence. Are you going to take up her mantle? There is no question that we need a strong voice in Washington on the issue of gun control. Carolyn McCarthy has been that voice, not just for New Yorkers, but for every American. And that is one issue that I'm going to be very proud, if I'm elected, to carry on in her, um, in her stead. Um, she, but but she, she's so much more than just that one issue. She was so strong on education. And for the past year and a half, she has been instrumental in helping the people of her congressional district who were hardest hit by Superstorm Sandy, some of whom are still not in their homes yet. Um, that, she has, that has been a, a high priority for her in this last year and a half. So she has been just an amazing advocate for her constituents, all New Yorkers and all Americans, and it would be my honor to be able to follow in her footsteps. Yeah, and how do you find the transition moving from a prosecutor into uh, legislation? That's, that's an interesting twist. Many have done it, but how do you see that office? There are definitely mm -hmm. different skill sets involved in being an executive and being a legislator where there's much more compromise. Um, but I, I, I think that at the core of being an effective congressperson or an effective DA is an ability to advocate on behalf of your constituents. And that is what I've spent my whole career doing, advocating and being a voice for those people who don't have a voice. And that's what we need in Washington. We don't need more partisan politicians in Washington. We need more pragmatic problem solvers like me. And that's ultimately why I made the decision to get in this race. I think New Yorkers need to have an effective voice. I have been an effective voice for them on a number of issues over the past eight years as DA. And I look forward to continuing uh, doing that in Washington if uh, the voters send me there. This is Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, president of Local 237 Teamsters. Our very special guest for this segment is Kathleen Rice. She is the district attorney of Nassau County. She's also a candidate for the United States Congress. Uh, how do you see the um, strategy of moving away from prosecution to prosecutions to moving into more preventative um, areas to try to combat crime? How is that going? If you look at the way that people traditionally view the role of a DA, you know, you look at the Perry Mason shows on TV and Law and & Order, and it's very lock em up kind of mentality. you got to be tough. In, in order to be tough on crime, you got to put people in jail. And while there is a need to punish and take away from society the most violent people, uh, if you really want to uh, obtain long-term crime reduction, you have to be involved in the community. That is the only, that to me is not just being tough on crime, but it's being smart on crime. Trying to come up with different initiatives to address long seated problems like drug problems like we've had in Nassau County, a drug market that we were able to get rid of six years ago now that over and over the same thing was done and they got the same result. And we finally got an effective result here where crime has been reduced significantly and over the long term. And the reason why, Greg, is because we reached out to the community and said, will you do this with us? You have to have community buy-in if you want long-term crime reduction. You, you, you want the people in the community to take ownership of what you're doing. And so we've been very effective, whether it's through our Terrace Bedell Initiative or our gun buybacks or our educational programs in the school or our job training uh, to help people get family-supporting jobs so they can have a, a good life. Tell us how the job training uh, works. Who is eligible for the job training and, and what kind of setup do you have and what kind of jobs do they uh, receive? We opened up a resource center in, in the aftermath of the initiative we did in Hempstead. What we realized is that the, all the social service agencies, and this is true not only in Nassau County, but pick any county in the state, where taxpayer dollars pay for social service agencies to provide services to the public. The problem is that the public, it's very difficult for them to figure out how to access those services. So in the aftermath of the initiative that we did in Hempstead, we set up a resource center in the center of the village of Hempstead. Anyone could come in, walk off the street, say, I need to get a driver's license. I need to get job training. I want to get my GED. I need to get drug treatment. I need an after-school program for my child so I can get a second job. And we have a resource coordinator there who will hook people up in a more efficient way with the services that they need. 
people want to work. People don't grow up and say, I want to be in and out of jail for the rest of my life. That's not a life anyone chooses. And so we need to have the government ensure that the money that is out there for these programs and these services for people, that you make it so that they can access them and that they can get family supporting jobs because we know that if a person can get a family supporting job, they are feeding into the economy, their kids are gonna live in a place where they can get a good education, and, and that just, you pay it forward, it keeps going. So I've always kind of seen it as much, my role as much more broad than just putting people in jail because you're not gonna arrest your way out of a crime problem, I don't care what the crime is. Right. Uh, that's all the ha time we have for this segment of Reaching Out, I'm Gregory Floyd. President, Local 237, and our very special guest was Kathleen Rice, Nassau County District Attorney and candidate for Congress. And we would like to have her come back when she's a Congresswoman. So we have Congresswoman <laughs> Kathleen Rice on the show. <laughs> thank you for great. coming. Greg, thank you so yeah. much.